Hi, my name is Amin Mishkesh. I am a postdoctoral researcher at the Nuclear Engineering Department here at the University of Tennessee. We are currently at the Joint Institute of Advanced Material, which is located out of university campus, more specifically in Shiroki's farm. And I can say that we've got pretty good view over here along the Tennessee River. Today, I'm going to show you around our labs. So let's start first with our microprocessing research facility clean room. The Antiara clean room has been in function for about five years now under the supervision of Dr. Harry Gricosi. It provides researchers all necessary equipment to perform device fabrication process such as photolithography, uh, DFT deposition, reactive ion etching or thermal annealing. So actually we are gonna take a look closely at these different equipment in a while. So, in order to have access to the bean room, there are certain measures that need to be considered, more specifically concerning personal protective equipment. And this is in order to uh, maintain the property of the inside of the bean room and prevent it from any contaminants. So, these PPE or personal protective equipment are basically head and shoe covers, bunny suits, uh, gloves, and glasses. So, let's dress up and. see the inside of the vacuum chamber, the three different sputtering sources, as well as an extra source this is for thermal evaporation, if one is interested in thermal evaporation instead. And here, as you can see, the different material or sputtering targets that we can use, such as gold, chromium, aluminum, tin oxide. Another equipment we do have for deep field deposition is the ECBD or plasma enhanced chemical vapor deposition. It's completely a different technique, a different process than sputtering. The system has the ability to grow polysilicon, silicon nitride, silicon oxide, and it is also capable of growing carbon containing films such as graphene. Right next to it, we do have uh, a reactive ion etching system. Such a system is designed to etch silicon containing compounds and can process up to 8 inches of wafers. We do have also some two furnaces that are being used for thermal annealing and in the other side of the clean room we have our photolithography system. As a quick illustration, since the photolithography is the process of using UV light in order to transfer a pattern or a geometry from a photo mask into a photoresist on a, a wafer. Silicon wafer here goes through spin coating with our spin coater and some photoresist. Considering a photo mask with this pattern, the wafer is exposed to UV light for quite some time, and this is using the contact printer, which is an MA6 from Carsus. After exposure and development of the wafer, we can see clearly the pattern of the photo mask on the surface of the silicon wafer, which is at this point really chromatization and lift off process. This is for the clean room. Let's go now and check the other labs. This lab over here is where we usually perform device characterization, radiation measurements, and computational analysis. So we're going to take a look at the different tools available and get in touch with some students working here. As for computational analysis, we have Jake. I'm Jake Gallagher, and I work for Dr. Lukosi. And uh, as you can see here, we are modeling a semiconductor. The material we're doing is lithium indium diselenide. And this program here is tracking charge as uh, electrons and holes move through materials. So this will help us develop next generation thermal neutron en en imaging systems. 
lab has different radiation sources to perform radiation measurements on our semiconducting and scintillating devices and uh, this is using different tools and modules from VME to NIMRAX. This is in addition to ASIC readout boards and acquisition boards. We have for instance Lance who is working here. Hey, my name is Lance Jouette and I work for Dr. Lukosi. Uh, right now I'm working on a laser power circuit for uh, an experiment to uh, invest, investigate properties of a semiconducting material. In this lab also, we perform device characterization in order to study the electronic properties of our devices such as uh, DLPS, DCT, PICS, which Robert is working on right now. Hello, my name is Robert Golduber and I'm a second year master's student working for Dr. Lukosu. Uh, over here we have uh, the setup that we use for photo-induced current transient spectroscopy and that is a procedure we do to characterize the defect structure in our semiconductor materials. Uh, the main uh, component of this setup is the cryostat here. First thing we do is uh, drop down the temperature to liquid nitrogen. Here we have the data acquisition system connected to our computer that, get, that records our results. Finally, this lab is for wafer preparation and device storage. In addition, it has different other tools like, for example, a uh, probe station, a drilling station, and plasma cleaner. This is one of the few boosts that we have in this lab and we use for device preparation such as uh, wafer polishing or device polishing and we can see for instance here a polishing machine on the right and on the left over there we do have an ultrasonic cleaner and uh, we can also see for instance Corey here is working in the other few boot. Hi, my name is Corey Hall. I'm a graduate student in Dr. Lukosi's group. I'm working on a double-sided strip detector made out of diamond, which will be used for associated particle imaging with neutron imaging. This is a fume hood that we use for some of our chemical processes, like cleaning samples, uh, making sure they're ready for metallization. We have just chemicals in here, acids, and a UV ozone cleaner to make sure there's no organics. After a sample is metallized, we can anneal the metallization, and we use this tube furnace for that and this is a vacuum chamber to pump it under vacuum and then we can introduce argon and that means we can metallize or we can anneal the electrodes in an oxygen free environment. All of our semiconducting and scintillation devices that we're using for radiation detection are being stored here in these cabinets such as methyl ammonium lead bromide wafers diamond crystals and lithium indium diselenide wafers. So this is in addition to some silicon photomultipliers, scintillators and uh, photomultipliers tools that are being stored in the other lab. And here for instance, he is working with them in one of his own experiments. My name is Heath Davis. I work with Dr. Bukosi's group uh, characterizing scintillation materials. Here we have an experiment uh, differentiating neutrons and gammas for Homeland Security applications. This is it for Dr. Likosi's lab and research group. If you have any question, just contact me or Dr. Eric Likosi. Thanks for watching and have a good one.